pharmaceuticals are a big business. So I was absolutely not surprised when a couple years ago, a pharmaceutical company called AbbVie jumped all over the somewhat recent trend of men experiencing low testosterone, packaging their solution and branding the issue as an epidemic, conveniently funneling thousands and thousands of men into doctor's offices where they were then handed prescriptions for hormone replacement therapy solutions and gels like Androgel. Overnight, this was a multi-billion dollar a year industry. So what happened to all the guys that are most likely some people that are watching this video too, who are on this testosterone replacement therapy? Well, your testosterone levels are likely back in the normal range. In many cases though, they're probably still on the low side, depending on where you were starting from. People might think this is good, maybe bad, I don't think it's good. So what happens when you start using the gel? So we're gonna find out in today's video. All the information in today's video, plus much more, can be found in my book, Master Your Tea. Visit MasterYourTea.com for a free digital download of the book. $20 in value, absolutely free for you. So will your body naturally produce enough testosterone to keep your levels where they are if you were to stop using this TRT gel? No, it won't. At the very least, it will take a significant amount of time to restore your natural endocrine function back to normal. So here's the situation. You end up being chained to rubbing an expensive smelly goo on your chest for the rest of your life, or at least as long as you care about getting a boner. That's no way to live. The goo itself is a band-aid, and what we need to do is actually get to the root of the issue, learn to understand the cause of the malaise, and then take action based upon what we know. That's the process I used several years ago to take my own T-levels from basically nothing to way above normal, way out of the medical reference range, even on the top. The first thing that the doctor gave me when I was diagnosed with the brain tumor that was blocking my testosterone production was a prescription for androgel. So I took it for a few weeks, but I decided to get rid of it because it didn't make any sense to me. And I got rid of all the medications shortly thereafter when I made the decision to uproot the problem directly and solve it with a natural solution. And that was the best choice of my life. That was years ago. And since then I've educated myself and then I put that knowledge into action in my life. And the results speak for themselves. I'm really confident I'll have high testosterone for my entire life because I now understand how to keep it that way. I'll naturally have a slight decline with age, but it'll never really reach the point to ever think twice about whether it's negatively affecting my life in any way. Right now, my well-being is very high, so is my morning wood. I can put on muscle fairly quickly and stay at a low body fat percentage year round without any trouble. I sleep like a bear in hibernation every night, and I can grow a good beard if I choose to. So I always gain strength and power in training, and that's actually an important cause of the high testosterone, more on that later on in this series, and I'm pretty sure women can also smell it. I also grew two inches in the meantime of uh, increasing my, my testosterone from very low to very high. And the task at hand for me at the moment is distilling this into a replicable process that you can use in your own life. I'm a believer that things happen for a reason, and it would appear as all the trouble that I went through personally in all the years of self-experimenting, learning what works and what doesn't, then my decision to become a writer and start my own company, might have just led us all right to this moment. So yeah, I think it, I was meant to share my knowledge with the world on this. You should know this, that medications and gels are not your only option. You also don't need to eat a dried tiger penis, which is apparently common in ancient Chinese herbalism. You can naturally increase your testosterone and growth hormone levels and then sustain your levels without this, this assistance. It's a process and it'll take anywhere between six months to two years most likely. But once you learn it and put it into action, you'll be set. It's time to begin building this foundation. Let's start learning. So what is testosterone? Testosterone is the principal male sex hormone, it's an androgen. It's found in both males and females and acts anabolically. While females naturally produce small amounts of testosterone and have far greater sensitivity to the introduction of additional testosterone into their systems, men clearly are where testosterone is most prevalent, which is seven to 10 times the amount that's found in females and in whom testosterone is most often desired. So it's secreted from the testes of males and the ovaries of females, with small amounts also coming from the adrenal glands. Androgens are steroid hormones and can be produced naturally and synthetically. The presence of androgens in tissues that have androgen receptors promotes protein synthesis in those tissues, giving it its anabolic influence. Androgenic effects include much of what we consider to be human maturation, especially in sexual tissues and organs. For example, androgens heavily influence the maturation of male secondary characteristics, such as the growth of the penis and scrotum, body hair, vocal sound, and depth. Anabolic effects are characterized by things like muscle growth and strength, as well as bone maturation, increased density, 
and increased strength. Testosterone gets to work in both males and females before we're even born and carries out its influence heavily, first during the sexual differentiation process, then into infancy, prepubescence, puberty, adolescence, and adulthood. T plays a major role in many of the processes in the body. One of the more prominent ones is spermatogenesis. So without the presence of testosterone and or the androgen receptor, spermatogenesis can't proceed past meiosis, i.e. you can't produce sperm. In non-sciencey terms, you're infertile. So now that we know where testosterone is produced, let's venture into a guess about what might be the cause of low testosterone production. There are two common culprits. They're medically recognized as primary and secondary hypogonadism. First primary hypogonadism is caused by deficient testosterone production in the testes. The boys aren't working properly. Second, secondary hypogonadism is caused by hypothalamic pituitary irregularities. So they regulate your endocrine system. For example, secondary hypogonadism can be caused when a piece of this puzzle isn't functioning properly. I'm of the opinion that these processes, both primary and secondary, do not operate independently as evidenced by the strong influence of the hypothalamus and pituitary gland on the gonads directly. So in the end, it all comes back to brain health and therefore also gut health. Your gut is really your second brain and you can directly influence its health by what you put into your body for nutrition. Now we're getting somewhere. So you'll recall that testosterone is produced in the testes by cells called Leydig cells. The average plasma concentration of testosterone in human males typically falls somewhere in the range of 200 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. In terms of a timeline versus plasma concentrations over a lifetime, T levels sharply rise during adolescence, peak in a man's 20s, then begin to slowly decline with age. It's most potent and most widely recognized in the human male body is its influence over the growth and development of sexual tissues. Your testosterone level is also a good indicator of lean body mass with the right stimuli. So elevated testosterone levels will increase red blood cell production, bone density, sugar uptake into muscle tissue, muscle glycogen storage, and protein synthesis associated with muscle growth. So let's talk about the feedback loop involved. The cascade of events that leads to testosterone production begins in the hypothalamus with the release of GnRH, which acts on the pituitary to produce two hormones. So these two hormones are LH and FSH. These are the gonadotropins. Once in the bloodstream, LH makes its way to the testicles where it exerts its influence on the Leydig cells, triggering a series of events that turns cholesterol into testosterone. As testosterone levels increase, LH production and transport slows, which is a negative feedback loop. The body and brain are communicating constantly to regulate important processes. It's one of the countless feedback loops, that, and there are a lot of different positive feedback loops as well in the human body. With this negative feedback loop, the brain can constantly keep hormone levels in check. In this case, testosterone, LH, FSH, and GnRH under normal healthy circumstances. When a problem arises, whether it's from a tumor, a traumatic stressor, or some summative buildup of small unnoticeable stress, this not only affects everything downstream, it affects everything, period because it's a loop. So you'll notice that testosterone doesn't only linearly exert its influence back on the hypothalamus alone, it can also work directly back on the pituitary, essentially skipping a step if your body is looking to regulate gonadotropin release. When this little system is working properly, everything's good in the hood. When something goes wrong down the line is when we run into noticeable issues. FSH, the other gonadotropin, is chiefly responsible for stimulating or regulating production of sperm and the Leydig cells in the testes. At this point, we understand that testosterone production is regulated by the brain, namely the hypothalamus and pituitary, via a handful of powerful hormones. And it's synthesized by a number of intermediate steps from cholesterol and the Leydig cells, and this process all tied together is in a negative feedback loop. So now it's produced. So what happens next? So when testosterone is released into your blood and into your bloodstream, it's actually entering a molecular game of tag, so to speak. So a carrier protein named SHBG, or sex hormone binding globulin, is released from the liver, and SHBG is it. So SHBG's role is to regulate the level of freely circulating testosterone in your bloodstream. So when it binds to a testosterone molecule, that testosterone cannot effectively enter and exert its influence on a cell. So the more SHBG is in the bloodstream, the fewer testosterone molecules actually reach a cellular target. This isn't inherently a bad thing, it's just the way things work. It's another negative feedback loop meant to regulate your endocrine function. However, now I hope that you're beginning to realize just the sheer amount of self-limiting processes that occur along the line in this cycle. And none of your testosterone has actually had any effect on anything yet in this system that we're talking about. So with SHBG in this role, we now understand that testosterone levels and SHBG levels 
are inversely correlated. The more SHBG in your system, the lower amounts of free active T. Again, if something small is affecting anything along this pathway, you're likely going to experience that as an issue, manifesting itself as lower than optimal T levels. For example, you might have very high levels of free circulating testosterone, but with the imbalance in SHPG production, much of that free T won't reach a target, which sucks. So we'll discuss free testosterone and total testosterone further uh, in future videos. So if you like this information, if you want to learn more about how to naturally optimize your testosterone, every single subject that you could ever hope to learn is covered in my book, Master Your T, which I'm now offering right now for free over at MasterYourT.com as a digital download. So all you got to do is enter your email over there. I'll send you an email with the download link. You also get a $5 off coupon for Testro X, which is really cool. And uh, if you like this, this video, just subscribe to the channel. Pay attention for the future uh, videos here in the Master Your T series on the channel and uh, leave a comment with any questions that you have. I'll see you in the next video.